So I don't know how to start this video, but I did start with so, like I do almost all my videos. All right, this is Norse Teaches Science. It's Miss Norse here. We're still in biology edition, and this is still continuing in genetics information. Today, I present to some to you guys something called sex-linked traits. So the goal of this video, by the end. I can explain what a sex link trait is and how to solve it for its probability through a Punnett square. So before we begin, what are what are the human chromosomes and why are they important and what do they tell us about us? We talked about chromosomes when we talked about cell division. We also mentioned them that they can carry our traits. But in humans, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, 46 total. Chromosomes 1 through 22 are called our autosomes and the chromosome pair 23 is called a sex chromosome and this generalized information females sex chromosomes are xx and males are xy so if we look over here in this what we call karyotype this person is a male because they have a y and they have an x so males are xy the X chromosome is bigger than the Y chromosome, and sex-linked traits travel on the X chromosome only. So what are sex-linked traits? They're traits that are turned by an allele on one of the sex chromosomes. And we see them have um, some examples in humans are like hemophilia. Hemophilia means that you do not have um, or make enough of the enzyme called um, hemoglobin. So when you're get a cut or injured, your blood doesn't clot well. And you know, people who are, are hemophilic could die from it. Color blindness. Um, don't see certain colors or colors in general, or it's all black and white. There's different levels of being colorblind. And male pattern baldness, like you see in this video here. These guys all are experiencing baldness. But male pattern baldness does not mean that it's only for males. Females can have male pattern baldness too. They're just very unlucky in their role of the genetic lotto. So sex-linked traits, more males are affected, and we want to know why. Well, remember, sex-linked traits travel on the X chromosome. And females have two X chromosomes, and males have one. Since females have two X, chromo X chromosomes, they could get the, the recessive allele on one of the X chromosomes and then re-roll the die and get the dominant allele where, where it's not present, since dominant is over recessive, they don't have the trait. They're considered carriers. While males, they have one shot, yes or no. They roll the dice, and if it says, oh, your X chromosome has the genetic disorder for baldness, you're going to go bald at some point in your life. So there's no re-roll the dice. Males just get it or don't. Females can re-roll the dice and maybe not be affected by it. So writing alleles for sex-linked traits are a little different. Um, if you refer back to how we've done some of the past ones, we used just letters. And then we started incorporating the exponents or the superscripts when we ta started talking about blood types. Well, in here, we're going to have to use superscripts, and we're going to place them on all X chromosomes. Um, and it just depends on if it says dominant or recessive, what we use. Um, females can be carriers. That's where they have one dominant and one recessive um, exponent. Males can't be carriers. Refer back to the last slide. Males get it or don't get it. Females get it, don't get it, or they're carriers. So examples of how we would write it would be like X capital H, X lowercase h, or X lowercase h, Y. All right, those are some examples, but let's practice doing it. It says hemophilia is a sex-linked recessive disorder. So recessive disorder for hemophilia means that to have it, it all depends on the lowercase h. So we're going to use capital H and lowercase h with this. So a normal female, we know it's a female, so we're going to do x, x. And since it's a normal female, that means they're going to have two capital H's. They're not having hemophilia. This next one says a female with hemophilia. Since we know it's a female, we're going to do X, X. Since they have hemophilia, and hemophilia is a recessive disorder, 
they have to have two recessive alleles, so that means both would be lowercase h's. A female carrier. Female means XX. Carrier means heterozygous, means they have one capital letter, one lowercase letter. All right, now to the males. Males are X, Y. This says a normal male. So like females, you have to have capital H's. But there's only one X, so you just place the capital H on that one X, and the Y stands alone. So the last one's a male with hemophilia. That's X, Y. And since he has hemophilia, if you look up here, we did the females. The female with hemophilia had the lowercase h's. So you're going to have to do a lowercase h on the x. And again, the y stands alone. You don't place anything on y. Y just is y. It gets no little exponent to it. So let's apply this to a problem. It says, show the Punnett square in the ratios for a cross between a male with hemophilia and a woman who is a carrier. So it says a male with hemophilia. Remember, males go down the side, so we do X, Y, and we refer to back to the last slide, males with hemophilia has lowercase h because it's still going off the last slide. Now the woman is a carrier. So a woman goes at the top. That's X, X. And remember from our last slide, carriers are heterozygous, so one capital H one lowercase h. Now when we fill in the Punnett square, um, y's go last, x's go first, and you also place it based off the size of the letter. So in this first box, this x capital H is going to come down, and this x lowercase h is going to come over. This next slide, the x lowercase h comes down, x lowercase h comes over. Next slide, x capital H, and then Y. The last, last box is X lowercase h, Y. So we're going to do our ratios. We're going to do our genotype ratio first. First one I see is X capital H, X lowercase h. How many boxes have that? And that's 25%. Next one I see is X lowercase h, X lowercase h. That's 25% for that. One way that you can check, remember females are XX and males are XY. In, most ca in all cases, you have a 50-50% chance of being a male or a female. So your female genotype should be add up to 50 and your male should add up to 50 and everything should add up to 100. Males. The next one is capital um, X capital H Y. I only see one of those, so that's 25%. And the last one is X lowercase H Y, and I only see one of those, so that's 25%. All right, now the phenotypes. We're just going to branch off of what we just wrote over here when we do phenotypes. So when you write the phenotypes for sex-linked problems, you have to identify if it's male or female, and you have to identify have it, don't have it, or if they're a carrier for females. So if we look here, this first one is XX, so that's female, and it's big H and a lowercase h. That means that this is a female carrier. The next one, XX is female. Do a little comma. We have two lowercase h's, so that means um, they have hemophilia. Or you could just say affected. Next one, XY, that's a male has a capital H, so we're going to say normal. Or you could say not affected, or no. And the last one is XY, that's male. And they have a lowercase h, that means they are affected, so they have hemophilia.
And that's solving the opponent square with um, sex link trait alleles. I do have two more problems. If a woman has hemophilia, what must be true about her parents? So let's talk about the woman. So a woman would be XX, and she has hemophilia, so that's lowercase h, lowercase h. So what must be true about her parents? Well, remember, half your DNA comes from your mother, half from your father. So we split this in half. So this, one, this side comes from mom. So mom has to have an X lowercase h in its genotype. And there's two for a female that has that. So the mom could either be X capital H, which is a carrier, or X lowercase h, X lowercase h means she has it. The father, this side, when we write dad, gave an X lowercase h. But what makes a dad, uh, the dad male is that Y. So what we know is that the dad has hemophilia. The third question, is it possible for a male to be a carrier of hemophilia? The answer here is no. Males can't be carriers of sex linked traits. They either have it or don't have it because of their one chromosome. So this kind of ends the video on sex linked traits. There's a lot of stuff out there about sex linked traits. I just talked about three of the types sex linked um, genetic disorders, but there's many more out there. So I suggest you just go to Google and or go over and look at some more of the YouTube videos so that you can figure out what's going on there. But I hope you learned something today, and this is Mr. Norris, and he is signing out for this video.